Yes, I know we only looked at Jeronism on Friday, but he has now released such a poor moon landing video, I simply had to take a look at it. He claims that there are seven easy ways to tell we didn't go to the moon. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors today, Curiosity Stream. Now, Curiosity Stream is smart TV for your smart TV. They're the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, and the Disney Plus for the scientists in all of us with award-winning exclusives and originals. And of course, Curiosity Stream has thousands of streamable documentaries and non-fiction TV shows on topics such as history, science, nature, food technology, travel, and more. Featuring 35 collections of curated programming hand-picked by their experts and streaming to any device for viewing anytime, anywhere. Now, lately, I've been watching a show called Children of the Stars which is a fascinating insight into the Latin American culture's relationship with the night sky throughout history. Love that sort of stuff. Thoroughly recommend it. Click on the link in the description and use my code SIMANDAN to sign up for just $14.99 for the entire year. Right, back to today's video where Jaron is once again trying to convince everyone that we didn't go to the moon. Now, I realise that this specific Conspiracy theory is one that is quite widely believed. So I realize I'm gonna have my work cut out here. So without further ado, let's crack on with it, shall we? India tried to land on the moon today, failed. So not sure if you guys got a chance to see that funny video. If you, you know, watch it uh, again, as with my videos, all my videos, all the links to all the things that I discuss, the videos I show, all that will be in the description following the live stream. Give it a few minutes, it has to, course upload and render and all that processing whatever else they do uh, make sure that I don't say anything wrong make sure I don't say the double F word you know things like that so once they do that and they put the video up then I go in and I add all the uh, you know links so yeah so this is the final shot that they had you got everybody here uh, just looking around what's going on what happened now while this was a failure of sorts India still did land land a craft on the moon. Now, of course, it's what's known as a hard landing because the braking thrusters failed during the de descent stage. Uh, but again, they couldn't land their craft at the south pole of the moon. Now, do remember, there was no humans in it. It's just a craft that they sent to the moon to land there. But the United States did it 50 years ago quite easily. They even had people in the craft. In fact, they got there, they got out, they put out all kinds of test equipment that send back data to the Earth you know, uh, seismographs and, and solar arrays and retro reflectors and they played golf and they drove around in a moon buggy and did jumps and twists and turns, all that fun stuff in 1969. Actually, the moon buggy didn't go up till 1971 in Apollo 15. However, your point is not a valid one. When the US went to the moon in 1969, the NASA's budget was four billion dollars in 1969. That's the equivalent of around $30 billion today. The India Space Agency's budget last year was only $2 billion. That's why the US did it in 1969. With ridiculous technology, uh, and we're going to look at something funny in that regard as well. But yeah, if you watch this, uh, this is the final screen. They just got to this point and said, oh, we don't have any more data. And then these guys congratulated themselves and uh, everybody was sad because uh, India did not pull it off, much like Israel tried to do, uh, you know, a few months back, also uh, failed. Yes, failed the mission, but they still have a craft on the moon. Some flat earthers don't even think that the moon is a solid object, so... So, you know, this stuff just goes on and on. People still want to believe it. And again, here's the thing. I say it all the time. If you want to believe this stuff, you can go right ahead. You know, I mean, you shouldn't be watching this video so much if you want to believe in this stuff because... Uh, I certainly don't believe it. And on this channel, what I do is I give you my opinion of these events. And, you, you know, if you don't want to watch it, you don't have to be here. We don't know. But it's very amusing watching someone fail so hard. And, of course, we like to stop others from falling for your beliefs. That's something that I always have to mention because I'm afraid people think this is like mandatory viewing or something because they love to get on here and give me thumbs down and, uh, you know, lace the comments with their nonsense. And, you know, if that's you, what are you doing here? 
that's my question. So, yeah, that's the uh, number one item on space news today is that uh, these guys could not complete the mission, uh, even though the United States, they sent people there easily 50 years ago. I would argue that it wasn't easy at all, Jaron. But India, a fail. In related news, I don't know if you saw this. It's hilarious. Hewlett Packard, and this is on the Hewlett Packard website here, uh, is building a NASA, a new supercomputer to support future human mission to the moon because they did it on Game Boy level technology uh, in 1969, but today you need the supercomputer. Now, I don't think they need a supercomputer to make the mission a success, but if it helps with the mission, then why not? We need to use the technology we have to make these missions as easy as we possibly can. Because uh, technology has you know, grown and things have gotten easier and cheaper, so now you need a supercomputer to do what you did so easily with some nonsense equipment uh, back 50 years ago. So this is uh, August 22nd, a press release basically saying that a new supercomputer at NASA's Ames Research Center will run modeling and simulation workloads for the lunar landings. Thank you very much, HP, uh, for providing this. You know, And this is what I mean when I say that NASA is a jobs program. It just creates jobs for other companies, things for other companies to do and to try and get better and to try to improve. That's NASA's goal. It's actually not to physically go anywhere. It's all a ruse. You know, again, believe it if you want. I'm somebody who simply does not. But NASA and its operations isn't a question of belief. You can see the missions that they do. It's all verifiable. So uh, if we want to watch something funny, which I do, let's watch this. And this is from a YouTuber named Mountain Bear. If you ever watch uh, Owen Benjamin, then you've definitely already seen uh, this video. It's uh, set to South Park animations, but includes Don Pettit, talking and then Gene Krantz but it also then has Neil Armstrong talking about the kind of technology that got them to the moon 50 years ago and then when you weigh that in with the space news from today that we just talked about that HP needs to build a supercomputer for them to get there and India crashing all this fun stuff it becomes quite comical enjoy this it's pretty funny this should be interesting I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology, and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. <laughs> again, that was Don Pettit, uh, who I think Owen Benjamin said it best the other day, who sounds like he got kicked in the head by a donkey, which is very true. And what has that got to do with anything? I could say that you sound like you've got a straw stuck up each nostril, but I don't, because it doesn't matter. We base our opinions on what you say, not how you sound when you say it. Let's continue. We're now going to listen to Neil Armstrong tell us about the technology. Uh, it's just pretty funny to hear this guy talk and to see it animated South Park style. Here we go. Apollo computer had 32K of fixed memory and 2K of erasable. That's, that was it. No screen, no sound, no icons no no nothing just it, and the, the keyboard just had oh I, it had zero through ten read clear and enter no graphics no screen no uh, on its best days it couldn't get to one megahertz wow so it was slow and weak but it got us there but it got us there I don't understand the argument here. What do they want? A computer that is faster than all they could create back in 1969. Now, if Jaron is making this video two weeks after the event, then of course he may have a point. Yeah, it got you there, but now we need HP to build a brand new supercomputer to send to Ames Research Center so that we can get there again 50 years later. If this makes sense to anyone, good luck in your future endeavors. It doesn't make sense to me. That's why I make these videos. Did you not read the article about HP? So the supercomputer isn't the computer that will get them to the moon. It said it would help with modeling and simulating workloads. And back in 1969, I assume they would have done all that sort of stuff with their brains. So let's continue. We now have Gene Krantz. I haven't uh, seen anything that indicates the telemetry data is even in existence. And as I said, even if we had it, we don't have the machines to play it back. Right. We, we've been unable to, to, to track it down. I mean, we don't know uh, where this, this telemetry data ended up and we don't know the, what, what path it may have taken. So 
<laughs> Unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't really give you much of a clue as to as to where this data ended up and whether it, it still exists or NASA not. NASA admitted that it had lost lost the original footage of man's first steps on the moon. The most heralded, most famous achievement accomplishment of mankind, of humans, the landing on the moon, NASA lost everything. They're claiming there's there's nothing in their archives, nothing in storage, nothing in a cardboard box someplace that has anything to do with the Apollo missions. Um, it's all gone. And that's clearly not true because there are photos and videos and other information. It's not all gone. <laughs> and what people fail to realize, and I have to always bring this up, one thing I used to believe and I no longer believe, I used to think like eventually this would come out, eventually it would be admitted that we didn't go to the moon. And now I've changed my you know, perspective on that. I now realize that they can never admit. You know, uh, NASA or the American government can never admit that we didn't go to the moon. There's too many implications. There's too much that relies on on this whole idea that, you know, conspiracies can never be kept under wraps. Uh, uh, all lies would get out. Uh, you could never hold that kind of information. That uh, You have too many people that know, uh, even though, you know, barely anybody needed to know um, what was going on. And let's look at that real quick, just what I'm talking about there. Yeah, please do, because it made no sense whatsoever. We're going to be looking at a quote by Gene Krantz, who was in that video. Gene Krantz said... In his book, Failure is Not an Option, he said, In the late 1960s, our simulation technology had progressed to the point where it became virtually impossible to separate the training from actual missions. These simulations became full dress rehearsals for the missions down to the smallest detail. The simulation tested out the crew and controller's responses to normal and emergency conditions. It checked out the exact flight plan, mission rules, and procedures that the crew and controllers would use for a later flight. In an interview, he later said the simulations were so real that no controller could discern the difference between the training and the real mission. But surely that speaks very highly of the simulations that NASA ran back then. So this just puts to bed all the nonsense of people saying, well, there's too many people that would have to be involved. And, and when they would admit it, they would come out, would come out as it was being faked. No, barely anybody needed to know because everyone sitting at those controller stations, everyone sitting at the mission control uh, could have been fed just false data, basically simulation data. You know what? I absolutely cannot argue this point. They really could have. There's no way to know. Now, if this was the only piece of evidence to say that NASA went to the moon, then you may have a point. But unfortunately, it's not. Very easy, right? When the entire universe, and I've talked about this numerous times, uh, is simply a massive supercomputer. You can send satellites into it, you can send probes, you can go to asteroids, whatever you want. You're doing it in a simulated environment uh, and just passing that off as real. And the people sitting at the controller stations would have no clue, especially because there's no video cameras on any of this stuff. You know, go back and look at the India landing today. You're telling me we don't have the technology to put a video camera on the craft as it's heading towards the moon, as it's falling down towards the moon. You can't have a live video feed. What year is this? 2022 and actually the India Lunar Orbiter did have a camera on board and it took many many photos. What year is this? Give me a freaking break. I mean this is basically what these people were looking at. Is this screen? How hard is this to make? Well this is how far it is in horizontal velocity. This is vertical velocity. This is downrange. It's all simulation data. None of the people at the computers would have any idea. And even if you go back and try and find the views, let me see if I can find one. It might take me a second. Didn't have this set up. Uh, but if you look at what these guys are actually looking at on the screens, uh, it's just simulated data. Here we go. None of it is actual video. You can see over here. You can see here. This is a little craft here. You got this little graph. Amazing. There's actually images up on the screen. And Jiren is saying that there isn't. You can't make it up, can you? Well, there we go. Another Tim Ford Tuesday all wrapped up in a tight lunar module shaped package. Poor old Jaren and his personal incredulity didn't come out very well there, did it? A huge thank you for watching today. It really is appreciated. Honestly, it is. Uh, if you really did enjoy it, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We're very, very close now to half a million subscribers. Would love to get there by summer. 
Uh, and if you really enjoyed it, then please hit the like button as well. Just enough time to once again thank Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today's video. Remember, click the link in the description and use my code SIMANDAN to get Curiosity Stream for just $14.99 for the entire year. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week, and I'll see you on Friday for Flat Earth Fail Compilation 33. See you then.